What is up everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to run code on the Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W without actually having a physical device at hand using a free simulator tool called Wakwi from wakwi.com that enables us to have a free emulated environment where we can actually connect to the device a, a emulator device and run code in C and MicroPython and even attach peripherals such as sensors, accelerometers, and other common things you would use for projects in your day-to-day -day DIY projects with the Raspberry Pi, Pico, or Pico W. It's incredibly easy to set up. It's really beginner friendly. And best of all, it is completely free to get started. Of course, they have a pro version, but in today's video, we'll just be going over the free version here. And hopefully it enables you to enhance your prototyping and encourages beginners to be less daunted when entering the DIY space for the Raspberry Pi Pico or even other microcontrollers as you could see here, such as the Arduino, the ESP32, and STM32. So overall, this is a really cool tool and I'll just be showing you how to use it at a high level in this tutorial. Enough being said, guys, I do not want to waste any of your time. Let's jump into it. Okay, so to get started with Wakwi, it's incredibly simple. You just go to wakwi.com. You don't even have to create an account, which is pretty rare for a lot of these tools that make you create an account. I have one, I already signed in. You do not have to. And we're just going to click the Pi Pico, as you could see here. Now, right away, you can see there are a ton of examples, mostly with peripherals, such as LEDs, screens, and other things you would typically use in real life, especially for beginner projects. We're just gonna go down and start with a simple project here, which is the Blink LED. So I just open that and right away it opens an IDE that has the code for us. And sometimes it showed, shows us who the code is written by. A lot of these have a lot of open source code that are written by people in this community. So it is a pretty active community as far as I know. And you can even save and publish your, your project publicly to the community. I, actually, this one is by Yurish, so that, that's nice of him to include this code for us. And we can go ahead right away and just start the simulation running this code in C and see what it produces. So it should blink the LED as expected. So that's pretty cool. And what's nice is we don't have to install any drivers for C. A lot of beginners get intimidated coding on C on this device because frankly, coding on MicroPython is a lot easier to set up. And the SDK for beginners for C is not that straightforward. So it's nice we have easy access to an environment in C. So if you are, if you, if you did have any inclinations or desire to begin coding in C, this is a great way to learn coding in C on the Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W. Now what's even cooler with these IDEs is you, is you can switch programming language pretty easy. So I'm just gonna paste the same example in, in MicroPython here. So it's the same exact code, except it's the MicroPython version of the code. And I'll show you how easy it is to switch from C to MicroPython with Wakui. So we can just rename this file main.py and then we can pause the simulation and rerun it. And this should blink the LED as we did before in MicroPython. So it's pretty cool how we can get set up with another programming language all within the same IDE pretty instantaneously. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stop this simulation. Another thing we could do is we can add parts. So they have a free parts library, as you can see here, many common parts and many parts I've never seen in the past or played around with. So that will certainly allow me to maybe experiment with things in the future. So I think this is pretty cool as well. And you could just click it and you can add them, you can delete them. And then another thing you could do is let's say we want to grab an MPU 6050. We can drag it here, we can connect it like this and we can connect it to the pin. So we see that's pretty seamless as well. So that's even cool. You can have an MPU 6050. And you may be asking right now, well, the MPU 6050 is an accelerometer. So how do we simulate uh, moving this accelerometer? Well, they do do that to some degree. So what's pretty cool about Wakwi is their documentation is really, is really good as well. So we can go ahead and click this question mark and we can find some information about the MPU 6050, what it is, what the pins are. So I think this documentation is pretty solid and really useful for even advanced uh, DIY enthusiasts. You can see it tells you some things about acceleration, what it's measured in, and we can go down to this acceleration plotter to show you more of how acceleration is simulated using this. This example is with the Arduino, but that's fine. We're just gonna go ahead and run this code here. It's only plotting the acceleration values from the MPU 6050. So we can go ahead and run this simulation. And the way we simulate acceleration on the device, of course, we're limited is we just take these bars here 
and we slide them and you could see the graph is changing depending on the change of acceleration. So while it does not mimic exactly reality where we can't in the simulator, it does provide us with the best means we can to actually mimic it. And of course, this does have some prototyping benefits regardless of its limitations. So that's pretty cool how we can add a series of sensors. We can switch programming languages and we could do all other sorts of things, which I just brushed the surface of using this free tool online from Waku.com, which I think is pretty cool and has a bunch of powerful implications for prototyping for all people in this field. So that pretty much sums it up for today's quick video, everyone. I hope you learned something new. And I just thought I would show you guys this because it's something I learned about recently. And I always like to equip you guys with more toolboxes or more tools you can have in the toolbox to be able to enhance your whole uh, DIY IoT experience because the more we learn in this space, the more we can do and the more ideas we can bring to fruition. So I hope you certainly learned something in this video. If you did, please leave a like or a subscription to this channel. A lot of you guys who are watching this right now are not subscribed to this channel. So I'd really appreciate just for you guys to hit that subscribe button because it would help me out a lot. Let me know what you want to see in the next video or let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions. Stay tuned and I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.